Welcome to another episode of the Coffee Roaster Warm Sessions podcast. Hopefully, you guys are having a spectacular weekend. If you're listening to this as soon as it's dropped, or weekday, or evening, whenever you're listening to it. Today, we heard somebody's listening to it as they're washing their dishes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is remarkable. Yeah. Uh, whether you're driving in the car or I don't mm-hmm. know, who knows where. So, Hopefully, you're having a good day. Hopefully, dude, things are well. Soaking your feet at the end of the night. I like it. <laughs> having a cold one yeah, I like yeah. it that's fair that's great well let's pour some batchy I could really use some batch actually I'm I'm tired for some reason I mean not you, for some reason I've been I've, in this I've office for going on oh not five hours yet but a little over four I think other than today the last two days have been 15 14 hour days for me oh this is tasty Sagacia. <clears throat> this is nice. Yo, yeah, oh, dude. I mean, mouthfeel, texture, yeah. sweetness, balance, everything's there. I mean, grind size is spectacular. Yeah, that's the a, brew bed that's looks very phenomenal. Nice. Yeah, this is. How many? Like eighteen weeks off of roast. <laughs> <laughs> For our friends who like to rest their coffee. <laughs> oh, man. This is about um, about a month off, for a, a little over a month. Oh, nice. So not not too much. Um, but this is a Guatemala Geisha from Finca La Soledad. This mm. is a little bit of the last bit of literally the last beans in the bag of Prodigal's Guatemalan geisha, mm-hmm. um, and it's tasty. It's nice mm-hmm. on batch. And imagine having geisha every morning on yeah. batch. I mean, I wouldn't drink it every morning. It's pretty sparkly. I would. It's sparkly. <laughs> it's like it's very crispy and sparkly. Actually, speaking of coffee, every it's morning, very nice. another Guatemalan coffee I had this morning that I would drink. Every morning, <laughs> I had to pause. I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm like, how would I drink it? I think I really liked it this morning because I had it on espresso. Okay. Yeah. On your flare. Yeah. Yeah. The only problem is I don't brew. I don't brew espresso every morning at home. It's so much work for me. Yeah, with the flare. Yeah, with the flare and, and with like, a comandante. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's the only lot. thing I need is I need to get an espresso grinder, but. Yeah. You need to cop one of our EKs and just take it with you. Maybe. I mean, this is tasty. Super I mean, tasty. I, I literally have zero complaints to say about the coffee, about the brew, the roast. Yeah. It's uh, delightful. It's it's excellent. It's not... I, I, I will say... I probably wouldn't say that this is like the most mind-blowing geisha I've ever had. Mm-hmm. But man, it's... I, I mean, everything's everything's there. I think Particle's last geisha on their last drop had a better geisha that I had. Yeah. Um, that was just, that was remarkable. This is still really, really outstanding, really good. Um, I mean, yeah, I don't, that's it. It's great. I like it. <clears throat> Sometimes coffees are just so great that you're like, there's not much to say. It's like, dude, it's a banger. Boom. Yeah. My The main thing that's going through my head is because we were talking about brewing espresso and I've been brewing more espresso Mm -hmm. at home. I'm like, I wonder what this coffee would yield as an espresso because as batch, it's very sparkly. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Are are you picking that up? It's just so like tingly and sparkly. Yeah. 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 No, it's nice. So I wonder what that would translate as an espresso. Yeah. Mm. It's nice. I like it a lot. It's fun. All right, podcast is over. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, no comment. Yeah, yeah, that's just it. That's it. Left a speechless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. It's remarkable. Well, I'll stop uh, raving about this beautiful, delicious brew, um, and we can get right into it. Yes. Um, Sergi, you uh, not too long ago came back from Chicago. Mm-hmm. Got to experience mm-hmm. a little bit of the coffee culture there. But your your the biggest thing that you were doing is you're helping 
do some consultation for um, someone who wants to start a cafe. Is that correct? That is a very correct introduction. Um, yes, that was that was super fun. Uh, I've never done a trip for like a meeting. I've never done that before. That, that was, was my like first. 48, 72 hours? Less. 48 hours? It, my turnaround time was 28 hours. That's insane. Yep. I flew in one evening, took a red eye, came back, then follow left the following. Yeah, it was something a little like about 30-something hours, actually. Yeah. It's, it's a wild. very weird feeling to do very something weird. like that. Like I had, um, I shot a wedding with a buddy in Idaho. Um, honestly, I just wanted to, like more, I just went there actually more just to like hang out with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he was also paying, so I was like, great. And everything was paid for. But literally flew in. I think Friday midday had a Friday evening shoot, like a late dinner, and then I shot the wedding the next day, Ooh. and then early morning at six five a.m. I was already flying back home. Yeah, literally twenty four, maybe thirty six hours or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it, it's weird. Um, the cool thing was <clears throat> because it was quote unquote business trip, and because everything that's business and coffee is fun, in my opinion. It's like the combo of having to do what? Oh, it's Mark, you're pointing out my mistake. Sorry, <clears throat> apologies in there, my mic. <clears throat> but no, what I was saying is like, um, I think going on a business trip that's coffee related feels like n- way too much fun because mm-hmm. basically we got to drink a ton of coffee, try out, explore the Chicago scene. Like you said, I've never been in Chicago, so I had no idea what I'm looking at. Um, so that was exciting, but at the end of the day, the whole point was I was there for a consultation gig. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been helping out, uh, in a coffee company from Ukraine, uh, from our friend Arthur who, um, hit us up and said, Hey, like we'd love to partner and see if we can get some consultation mm-hmm. and helping start some cafes in the United States, which yeah. is super exciting because they're a fairly established business. Um, in Ukraine, but the market is different in the United States. So that's where my level of expertise and like as mirror where mm-hmm. we come in, you know, come and play, which is super cool. I love that. Yeah. And that's something that seems to be recently become more of a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I know a lot of people even, I mean, since we've started the podcast, we've had so many people jump on the call and just say, Hey, can I just pick your brain for like an hour? Right. And I'm telling you where always happy to do that we just jumped on a call with somebody what was that like literally like three four weeks right before our uh, trip two weeks ago yes yeah, so, some, something like yeah. that um and so yeah yeah we, we we've been doing it and it seems like it's come up more often now um and i think the the first thing that comes to mind is why are why should somebody pay a consultant to consult you on starting a coffee shop, a roasting company or anything? Cause it feels like, I don't know, maybe this is like a very, actually maybe this is a little cultural thing mm-hmm. for, for us, but it's like, when you think about like, man, are you really gonna pay somebody a premium amount of money to just tell you how to do it? Like not even do mm-hmm. necessarily the hard work. You're, you know, you're you might not be the one roasting behind the machine. You're not going to be washing the bathrooms. You're not going to be the barista pulling shots. You're there to consult and to give direction. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it feels like, wait, really? Why would you even do that? I mean, because it's why would you pay so much money yeah. for somebody to just tell you on a Zoom call? Like, can't you just Google it? Can't you just research it? Mm-hmm. And I will say. Um, and I, you you can share much more, but what I, where I was going with that is like a face value. It seems kind of weird, but it's also not a it's not a foreign thing. Yeah. In for example, whether that's the VC world, like venture capital, whether that's in startup world, whether that's um anywhere, this is actually pretty normal. Yeah. Um, and simply because there's a lot of value here and i think in the coffee world we haven't that hasn't become really a thing that's popular yeah. um for multiple reasons but anyways question to you why is it even important to pay yeah. a consultant to come consult you and give you advice on starting a coffee shop or a roasting company 
I mean, one, I got to say this, it's, it, it just comes down to resources, right? Um, some people have the resource of time and the availability to, like you were kept posting on social media about the fact that, you know, getting a job is like being um, paid to educate yourself um, because you're gaining mm -hmm. experience and you're learning. You know, other folks have more of the resource of like money. So they're using the resources that they have to gain some of that experience that they don't have time to gain, mm -hmm. right? Um, because at the end of the day, I whenever I consult someone in starting a cafe, and I've lost plenty of gigs by saying this, and I will continue to say this, is if you have not worked in coffee, you should probably not start a cafe. That's kind of, in my opinion, that's kind of the given, simply because there's so many nuances to the business. Um, there's so many experiences that we as baristas have had, and then maybe as managers, and then some of us who became cafe owners have that. Are, these experiences are not written in books. And the best way to learn those experiences is to experience them. But the, I, I get it. That's not always like, that's not always the luxury to have that time. Like I've worked in coffee a little over six years now. Mm -hmm. I've been part of uh, four or five, five startups now. So those kind of experiences help inform me with information that you can't really read in a book. So when it comes to consulting, like why would you want that? Well, you want to learn from those experiences and the best way to do that is to bring in a person who's done it. That's as simple as that. You're kind of buying someone else's experience. Why is that Why is that even important? I mean, sheesh, I, I, so many reasons. We, I mean, the main reason is a lot of the stuff that I've experienced behind bar is not written about in some kind of manual. So you get to learn and you get to understand what's happening in a cafe setting that you wouldn't be able to get from any other form of education. Let's play the other side. What's a person losing out on? Yeah. What's the worst case scenario of not bringing somebody on? Uh, pff, easy. Going in to a very expensive, low profit endeavor with absolutely no sight blindly with a blindfold on. And what's the, what's, why is that bad? Uh, wow. Uh, imagine, uh, driving a car even at 20 or 30 miles an hour without, with your windshield being completely covered. It's going to be a disaster. Like, so why is that bad? You're going to lose money. You're going to lose people. You're going to hurt people. You're probably, uh, not going to run a successful business. A I feel like a lot of folks that I've talked to, this is my experience again, um, are wanting to start a cafe one because they've seen other people do it. So they're mm -hmm. like, oh, that's fun. And then the other reason is they literally have money that they want to invest, which mm -hmm. two, both, both two very good, proper, un understandable reasons. But at the end of the day, they don't always yield very positive results okay. because you are walking in blindly. So you, a lot of things. So along. say you've already worked a few years behind mm -hmm. bar. Let's say you've worked even at a roastery as well. Do you even need a consultant? Of course. Why? Why? Because there's other people who have more experience than but you. But now do. your blindfolds off, right? You can see. Uh, well, you you can, uh, so imagine now if your windshield was completely covered with mud. Imagine you took that mud with those windshield wipers and just smudged it. You can probably see different shapes and different lights and different stuff through your windshield but the road is still hard to see. And if a deer pops out in front of the road, you probably won't see it. So listen, I, my head, maybe because of the work that I do, everything I think about, like when I hear something, I think in terms of images and videos, yeah. obviously, because I make videos yeah, for a same. living. Um, and the only thing I could imagine and think about is the classic old, uh, this is like something you only see in the movies. Like this is like just a lost, this is a lost art. This is a lost image that they don't even put into movies anymore, unfortunately. The guy who picks up the newspaper and there's two holes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that an iconic yeah. image? Yeah. So you're telling me that's like you have some experience in the industry, you, but you are still have the newspaper still completely covering yeah. your whole view. You just have two holes looking and you're still not seeing the big picture. Yeah. How, is there ever a time when you can out 
outpace your uh, the level of consult the need for a consultant mm, yeah i would say so like at some point uh, if you've established multiple businesses in the market that you're now familiar with you probably don't need again the reason i bring up the whole driving and the car mm-hmm. example and visual is because a consultant is not the person driving the car yeah you know i'm um, literally the consultant is whatever is helping clear up the windshield maybe even the gps yeah maybe yeah the consultant is not driving the car yeah. they're not behind the wheel they're not doing any of that they'll they're helping folks see the road see the direction they want to head in and that's the goal of a consultant is to set you up in towards the path of success and i want to say i i i pose my questions that way is because I think some people can say, oh man, but you know, I don't have enough money. I think I, you know, I I can't pay somebody, you know, these ridiculous rates that you can, you know, find of coffee consultants. Mm -hmm. I can't afford this. Like I'm just trying to make ends meet like all this stuff, which I totally understand. Listen, I come from a small business background, very much so from my dad, my, you know, all my relatives, um, myself, like I, I get that. But what you're saying, I'm assuming, is that even though there's an upfront, weird, uncomfortable charge, there's actually a bigger uncomfortable experience is going in, saving that consultant rate, but then, you know, hurting your employees, uh, not knowing where to start, running into bumps that are completely unforeseen by you, potentially losing your business, losing your investment money that you invested into this. The the downsides are potentially like pretty big. Yeah. Like this is a, like a big deal. Yeah. And this is probably why people actually in most business worlds, this is why people actually have mentors and yeah. why people recommend, hey, if you want to start a business, you should probably surround yourself with people who are doing what you're doing, but they're 10 steps ahead. Yeah, for sure. And to be honest, I think like we talk about this quite often, but we started the podcast because we wanted to give a resource that we saw did not exist or at least in a lot of volume. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to offer that to people, which is cool now because now so m- like well, I, we just received a DM last week saying, Hey, I've been working in coffee for actually several years now, but your podcasts are encouraging me, are giving me direction and clarity. Yeah. And I'm like, yes, that's what it's for. Um, because that's, I mean, that that's important. Even things like, there are things that even after we started Mirror and after we started the podcast that I would actually wish I could go back and potentially adjust it and say, hey, no, you think this is how you do it, but there's actually... Not that that's wrong, but there's a better way yeah. of doing it. And I think a lot of the times consultants are really good at asking questions. So it's not necessarily about asking, giving all the right answers. It's positioning uh, both parties, the consultant and the person that's receiving consulting into a place where they can have dialogue and be able to almost play like devil's advocate in certain times and then propose a... Um, different like perspective that may not have been seen you know like like you said at the end of the day it's like dude do you want to total your jeep that you're off-roading on or do you just want to invest into some very good windshield wipers some liquid to clear up the vision so you avoid that massive accident you know what i mean i would say one of the i mean for us as well as, as i'm thinking about this like we we received consulting and coaching ourselves from yes. other people in the industry. We did have experience going into this, but we knew that our experience is not enough to just straight up start a business from scratch. Mm-hmm. Um, we also had very unique situations, so we needed advice on you know where and how do we roast, uh, where do we start with that. We both had roasting experience, but it was much different than our um, coach's experience. So we brought people in to help and assist mm-hmm. us and to give us a point of view that was way different than our experience had. And that was very intentional. That it literally, I think if we would have um, not done that and went trial and error and finally realized that, no, we actually need that person's opinion, we would have been so far behind. It would have been awful. Yeah. 
And the that's another point worth making is that it may not be like your case might not be life or death. Like yeah. it's either you go out of business or you stay alive. Even though sometimes that is actually the case. Right. A lot of times also it's like, well, <laughs> do you want to learn the very hard way? That's a good point. Or do you want to make this a little easier? And listen, running a business is already hard. There's mm-hmm. no e there's no way to make it absolutely easy. But you can make it easier and you can make it harder on yep. yourself. And having a second opinion that's already more well-rounded, more experienced, actually allows you to bypass some of the things that you know they've learned along the way. They had to go through the, all the trouble of learning that. They're now just, excuse me, they're just passing that on to you now. Yeah, That's huge. You could save time energy you could save a lot of money Mm -hmm. and i think with that like when you're looking for a consultant one of the main things you got to consider is like who do you jive with Mm -hmm. that's a big thing like because you don't want to start from scratch you don't want to hire someone or bring someone in that you um that just doesn't have the same ideology as you right um, you want to have some similarity, some common ground. And then yes. at the at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you can kind of build together and not just bring in a consultant that maybe you had no connection to, mm-hmm. no recommendation. And you're like, well, it says coffee consultant sold. Yeah. Like, and then yeah. you have to basically kind of fight your way through it you will spend a lot of time doing that and then you eventually will spend a lot of money and be like, man, this coffee consulting thing is a scam. Yes. When in the reality is it's not a scam, you might have not chose a compatible person for your business, for your values and what you're looking to do. And that's why it's also important to have that starting point. Like Mm -hmm. we're not saying go into this blindly. We're saying also like do your research, like kind of prepare for hiring a consultant. But then also there's other things that are happening that you are probably not aware with. And having that second point of view, super beneficial. And I think also to to play kind of devil's advocate on that point, and this might even make things a little more complicated, but also also realizing that just because you found somebody who might think like you, who might jive with you, that may not be actually the most important. Fair. Because they might have the same blind spots that you have. Fair. Where it's also sometimes very important to have somebody walk in and say, no, no, this is, you're actually not, you're, you may not be doing things 100% wrong, but there's a way more better or maybe more profitable or, you know, a faster way to do something. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be able to weigh a little bit of those, those odds, you know? Um, yeah, that's that I think I think that's a big caveat. Yeah. I think I think adding on to that is um something I've heard is that the difference between you and somebody that's really really successful. Of course there's a lot of differences um how, you know, your work ethic, you know, all, all just just a lot of things, but I think a big thing is knowledge. Mm-hmm. Like the people who are running a way more successful business than you just know things that you don't know. And every day that goes by that you do not learn and know the things that they do know, it's actually costing you. Right. Like your ignorance actually costs you money. Yeah. Think about this. If you can make a million dollars next year and your business is only doing $500,000 a year, so to speak, hypothetically, by you not learning and uh, learning from somebody or gaining that experience and that knowledge of how to grow your business to a million, it's actually costing you half a million dollars right. a year. Yeah. When All of a sudden, when you put it into that framework, you're like, wait a second. So actually, the more that I don't ask a consultant or for help, it's actually costing me opportunities and success. Right. Yeah, and at the same time, if you're also doing the same thing over and over again, hoping for some different results, like, yo, that's pretty insane. Like you're not gonna, you can't expect that, oh, I don't need a consultant, I'll just keep, you know, keep crushing. Well, if you're crushing, 
hasn't made you a beneficial and profitable business, yeah. you probably need some help. Yes. Um, so it that that's part of what I was saying earlier is like it does take some self awareness and some homework to do to be able to look at your stuff and be like, okay, these are the areas that I am just not sure of. And I need to find someone who can help me with those areas. Not someone to walk in and be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah you're doing everything great. Like we're not looking for a cheerleader. We're looking yes. for a coach. Yes. We're looking for someone who can um, get us to that next level. So you have to have a goal in mind. You have to have a problem. We'll help you find the solution. Yes. Um, I, I think I think of, in, you know, another image that pops in my mind is if, if you're going to the gym and you've worked out a couple of times and you're like, you're not getting the results, but you are going to the gym, you are showing up, but you're not getting the results you wanted. You might want to call a trainer and that trainer might not be with you forever, but they're going to set you on a path and help you understand how your body functions, what you can lift, what helps you do this and that. You start getting into that routine and then all of a sudden you don't need the trainer, yes. but you got into the routine and you start seeing seeing like progress and For heading sure. into the direction that you want to go. And I think a trainer is also like when you talk about like doing the same thing, but also not getting those results is insane. At the same time, it's just as wise and smart to do the same things over and over and over and over and over again if they're the right things yeah because a lot of things actually just take time, time. to build yeah for sure and you're like wait a second didn't Sergi just say the complete opposite yes but that's the benefit of actually having a consultant that's already a couple steps ahead of you so they can say listen these 10 things you just need to do them do the same 10 things better faster yep and you'll hit your results in five yep. years and then there's these five things that you just need to stop doing because they're wasting your time. They're not going to bring a return on you. Without the experience, you might not know how to decipher yeah. which one you need to keep doing and which one you don't. Mm -hmm. That's also a little, a little bit of a benefit. I mean, I think, I don't know. I, I, I think I could talk about this forever Same. because it's like, it's just so, it's so evident to me. Like that's also something... Maybe because I'm also experiencing the same thing where I'm like, okay, listen, whether that's in my video business or even with Mirror, where I'm like, I want to I wanna go to the next, get to the next step. And I know it's not because I can't do it. I'm very well confident in myself and assured of myself that I'm capable of building something really spectacular um, because of what I've already seen I've been able to build. But listen, I... I also need people that are like 50 steps ahead of me yeah. who own behemoths of, you know, businesses and companies who have already walked the path. And I'm like, listen, okay, who can I learn from? Who can I, where do I need to adjust either my friend group or adjust who I'm spending more time with? Who can I learn from? Because like that, going back to what I said earlier, that scares me. It's like, I'm like, wait a second. So I, if I can have a business that's five X the amount, the size and if it's the difference is just simply me not knowing something, my ignorance, that ignorance is costing me a lot of money. Dang. Yeah. I mean, outside of even growing, like, let's say we don't even talk about numbers and like business and revenue and mm -hmm. profit. Like, let's put that to the side. Outside of that, you'll be able to, one, get a little bit of peace of mind or a little more peace of mind. Yes. Like you'll yes. be able to create more space in your life outside of work to be able to do things that you may also want to do, but because this business is taking up so much of your time, that'll lower your stress that may create home life better for you. That can benefit you in so many ways because you don't have to make the same mistakes that others who are with more experience have already made mm -hmm. and can tell you, Hey, if you do this, this is the potential of something bad happening here you know what i mean so i think for me the benefit of that is like that's that's well above any kind of revenue or profit is knowing that hey if i get help from someone who has experience and they can direct me into this uh, direction then i can avoid all of those pitfalls i can avoid all of those things and i can actually create something else and creates more energy for me 100%. to continue investing into that same business 
or maybe even a new endeavor. You know what I mean? Yes. So I think with a consultant, you're also opening up the potential for bigger and different endeavors as well. So big benefit. I think that's, you know, equally as important. Like that health well-being side is ridiculously important. <laughs> like it's so crazy. Like I, there's a lot of things going on in my head and I'm like, yeah, because, you know, if you're stressed out because you just don't know what you're doing and your mind is in a billion places at once, how do you think your employees are going to feel? Yeah. yeah. Or if you're not eating, losing sleep. How do you think your families are going to feel? Yeah. How do you think your roommates are going to feel? How do you think, like, it just like it just gets worse. It's like a snowball effect. Yeah. Why put those things on the line when you can when you could just not yeah <laughs> you know like that's just to me that's just an it's, it's a no-brainer because the the again the cost of bringing somebody on like that is far less than the cost that you're gonna pay for not right i mean we could literally just close the pot on that because you kind of you you hit that really really well i think there's so many benefits on on top of that i'm I'm just stoked to see and connect with other people who just have very good experience. Like for me, like Max, like Max is consulting now, Max Mooney. But for me, he was just like such a majorly big experience. Like, yes, you know, I worked with him and I worked for him. But outside of that, seeing the knowledge that he brings was just like, and seeing what he, the value that he brought to you and I, to my family, it's just, it's insane to, surround yourself with people like that i mean it's it's super important for sure i think also congrats to max who just sold narrative not too long ago that's right the guy started narrative freaking from a bar from a small little coffee cart spearheaded a location built a freaking behemoth of a coffee company that's like world class so to speak and then also for for family which is insane to move across the country and to sell your little baby uh of a of a cafe is unreal unmatched and i think it's worth saying that hey um now that he's no longer uh owning narrative he's also took on a consulting gig which i would say like yeah if you're like listening to this and you're like no no, i could use like a consultant or some advice you guys maxwell is it the guy yeah. already, he started, ran, and sold a coffee yeah. company. Yeah. The guy knows a few things. A few things. Just a yeah. few things. Just that's it. Things. Yeah. You know? And so yeah. um, I think uh, I think that's it. You know, I think, I think this podcast has also opened up a few interesting opportunities for mm-hmm. us. It's taught me what I've what i enjoy doing actually i yeah. love doing this podcast like literally yeah um and so i think there might be some fun things that we we might be able to be working on for the future yeah that might help coffee roasting companies coffee shops start up and stuff like that but that's yeah. in the future yeah. um so yeah. there, there's a ton of fun projects i mean yeah. r- we recently got off the phone from that one project that's local here Mm-hmm. that I'm talking to. Um, there, there's a ton of, like, again, like you said already, the podcast has been a great resource and I'm I'm super stoked to talk with folks who are super passionate about coffee mm-hmm. at the end of the day. That's, I, I feel like every day in the cafe or every day on the phone or every day through FaceTimes, like the, the people that we've gotten to me, I'm just, man, I love this coffee stuff. I love the business side of it. I love, like you say, it's a game. It's super fun. <laughs> it's a game. Yeah, that's super exciting. So, Well, this won't be the last time we'll be covering similar topics. I think we'll, we'll go into much greater detail um, in later episodes, which might be, you know, really practical for some of you. But I think that's a wrap for this episode. Uh, thank you so much for tuning into another episode of the Coffee Restaurant Warm Sessions podcast. Uh, friends, I don't know, share this with somebody who might need you know, was thinking about starting a cafe, I I think this would be very valuable to send to somebody. So give that a send, give that a share. 
But uh, I think that's a wrap. Tasty little geisha today on on a tasty little episode. Let's freaking go. There you have it, folks. As we always say, reflect what's good. <laughs>